Welcome to the next video in the Heli, uh, the Dassel Heli tutorial series. Uh, this video we will cover how to prepare our helicopter for initial flight testing. So, if you've been following the tutorials up to now, we should have our receiver and our, our dew pilot securely mounted. Uh, next thing we need to do is make sure that our speed controller is properly connected. So. Our dew pilots come with this power distribution system. We need to plug that in to the power distribution, the power distribution uh, port here. Um, one end is going to go into our speed controller, and the other end is going to go to our battery. After you do that, um, for testing, you're going to want to make um, sort of training wheels here for your for your helicopter. So what you can do is you can take two wooden dowels like this. I cut a notch in them like this and put a rubber band so they fit together nicely. We need to stick them through the landing gear like this. And make it so the notch fits together like this. Um, the reason for doing all of this is uh, the out-of-the-box values for the for the the PID controllers might be very uh, might make the craft very unstable, and this will just be an extra level of security in case um, in case we lose control. If we don't fly that high, we should be able to land without much incident. So I'm going to take rubber bands. And I am going to rubber band these on there like so. Okay. Now the reason I actually use rubber bands instead of um, something maybe a little more secure is I actually want this to detach if something goes terribly wrong. Um, it's always better to break something cheap and easy to repair than it is to break something complicated. So we don't really want to break the landing gear or anything if something goes wrong. And also this will give it a little give. If we take a hard hit, the rubber bands can stretch like so and um, give us just that much more of a chance to survive if we have some kind of issue. So there we go. Um, that should be it. So let's, we can actually power this up and we should, if we've hooked everything up properly, we should actually see our, our dew pilot light up. Um, using the power of the the power through the distribution board. Yep, you can see the lights coming on. The servos have begun to move, and um, yeah, we're we're ready for some bench testing and then later some flight testing. Okay, now that our helicopter is physically set up for flight testing, let's do a couple pre-flight checks before we actually go out and flight test. The first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that our rotor tension is reasonably reasonably even. So we're going to push on this, and these two should start to break at the same point, like so. Okay, I don't know how well you can see that, but one when I when I push on the rotors, one should not give before the other. So as you can see, this one's already pretty good. So we'll leave it at that for now. Um, Examine the vehicle for any any damage. Make sure that none of the linkages on our swash plate are disconnected. Okay. Uh, the next thing we need to do is actually turn it on. So make sure that your throttle is all the way down. Have, make sure your receiver is on before you plug it in. So we will turn it on, plug it in. Let it go through its startup sequence, so it will sit there and it will calibrate. You can see, I don't know if you can see on here, but there's a, a blue flashing light. When that starts flashing red, we know that we're ready to go. Okay? 
So first thing we need to do is increase increase our throttle. This will increase the collective pitch on on our rotors. So when we see when we go up, we want to see the pitch increase. When we go down, we want to see the pitch pitch decrease. Let's see if we can get you a little better video, a little better view. So increasing pitch, decreasing pitch. If we look at the tail rotor, keep in mind which way this go this is going to be rotating, right? So if I yaw left, look at the motion, uh, the rotation of the rotor as well as the pitch of the of the blades, and make sure that this is going to give us uh, a left yaw motion. All right, so yaw right, okay, and that's going to give us extra thrust in this direction. So we will yaw right. And and doing that, I've it seems that I've accidentally armed the vehicle. So I'm gonna just reset it again quickly. Another thing, a good good practice when you're plugging these in, as soon as you plug it in, grab the head of the the, the helicopter just to make sure that it doesn't um, doesn't begin rotating. You can easily overpower it before it has a chance to start spinning. It's a very high speed, low torque motor, so. Um, you can easily overpower it and unplug it, but once it starts rotating, there's not much you can do about it. Okay, so we checked that. Um, next, let's check our sli our cyclic controls. So, take a look at our swash plate. If we push our right hand stick forward, the swash plate should tilt forward. If we push it back, the swash t plate should tilt back. If we push it to the left, it should tilt left. If we push it to the right, the swash plate should tilt right. That's pretty straightforward. Um, now we need to make sure that none of our our controls are reversed in the in the actual Ardu pilot. So the first one I like to test is the tail rotor. So rotate, swing it, swing the helicopter back and forth, and you should see the tail rotor attempting to compensate by generate, but it should be producing a thrust in the opposite direction. So if I swing the tail this way, it's going to push a, give me a thrust back this way. So just make sure and make sure that that looks right. Do the same with your uh, with your swash plate too. So tilt it. And if you're in acro mode, which you should uh, which you should be for all this testing, this initial testing, as the vehicle rotates one way, the swash plate should try to fight the motion. So make sure that none of those are reversed, because if any of those are reversed, um, we can get some bad oscillations and we will most likely crash. Um, so if all that checks out, we are ready to do some flight testing. Now before you fly, it is important to check your battery. So I've been flying this one a a little bit so far, so the battery's actually had a little bit of time to deplete. So what I'm going to do is take this balance plug and plug it into here. So we'll take a look at the voltage. So there's the total voltage. 3.92, 3.94, and 3.98. So those are showing the voltages of each of the cells. Um, we don't want any voltage, or any of the cell voltages to drop below 3.5, otherwise we risk our ESC shutting off and losing control of the vehicle. So it's important to check your battery before you fly.